Welcome to this Lucky 44 tutorial on using the Arma 2 editor. In this episode, we're going to begin to make a simple mission from scratch. This is going to be a multiplayer mission. So you're going to click on multiplayer first here. And you're going to go check with your parents and make sure it's okay that you can play online. <laughs> Just kidding. And since you're going to be really effectively you're working offline go down to the bottom right and pick new server don't join somebody else's and it's fine to just use a LAN host you don't really need to put it online um, you can leave everything else there by default and just say okay okay on the left you pick a map and just pick beauties which is the small island map that comes with the game and you want to pick the blue new editor uh, the wizard thing is great, but we're going to work up through the regular editor in a series of videos here. So, click play. Now I'm into the map, and this is the basic editor situation. If I scroll my mouse in and out, I can move around on the map. If I right-click with my mouse, I can drag the map around. Uh, and you'll notice that you have a crosshair cursor to show you exactly where you are and the extended lines, left and right and top and bottom, help you line things up. Okay, very brief overview of the options over here on the right. F1, the first option here, is to create units and place them on the map. F2 is to put groups of units on the map, and that can range from soldiers to planes to just about anything else. Um, Triggers are one of your most important concepts, but we're not going to get into them right now. Waypoints are, as you might guess, uh, how you set a path for units, AI units, to move. And there's a lot of other things you can do within that, but that's basically what waypoints are for. Synchronize is something more complicated. Markers puts a marker on the map uh, so that when players look at it, well, there could be a couple reasons. One is that when players look at it, they can see... Um, points that you want them to know on their map. Um, the other thing is you could do more complicated stuff which we'll get into later. And modules, uh, there are a series of modules that are uh, built-in sort of applets that do certain things automatically. And with those seven choices you can do just about anything in the game. What we're going to start out with is placing some units. And it's always a good idea to place the player unit or units first because the game is happy or I should say it's unhappy if you do not have a player unit assigned on the map. So I'm going to go to the town of Strelka here and at this northern edge by this intersection I'm going to double left click and I get an insert unit uh, menu. Um, I'm going to play have the players be United States Marines so they'll be on the blue four side. The type of unit I'm placing is men. The other options uh, are visible there, but we want men. Um, this will be player controlled. We could set it at playable, which would mean it could be played if there are enough players to play, or AI will pick it up and run it for you. Or lastly, you could make it a non-playable, purely AI unit. But in this case, we want to make it a, the player unit. So our first unit is going to be the player. So that you I'm going to make this mission with up to four players, but it has to have at least one player. Don't worry about any of that stuff there. We want to change the rank of this unit to sergeant, because he's going to command the little fire team. And the type of unit, we are going to, in fact, make him a fire team leader. And that pretty much just spells out the type of equipment he carries and uh, how much room he has to carry things. Um, when you pick a unit type, that's all that that really has to do with. You know, if you pick a designated marksman, he's got a designated marksman rifle. Um, an engineer has mines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and strangely enough, the soldier unarmed is—you guessed it—unarmed. But we're going to make him a fire team leader. We are going to leave him in formation so that the rest of his team falls in formation with him. Uh, we don't need to give him a name yet. Skills currently set at 100%. We could slide that bar up or down. doesn't matter. If it's a player unit, this is irrelevant anyway. Um, and the azimuth, or azimuth as they say in some Germanic language, I guess, 
we can point this little arrow here to the direction we want him to face. We can always change this later, but you might as well do it now. So I'm going to have him facing sort of northwest up the road. And everything else we can just leave uh, like it is and say OK. And here's our unit. If we zoom down, unit stays the same size. The little slash identifies him as a fire team leader. The red double ring around him identifies as the necessarily player unit. And he's going to be just at the outside of the little bombed out town of Strelka. Next, I'm going to add the rest of his fire team. So I double click again, double left click that is. I'm going to pick another man, except this time I'm going to make it an automatic rifleman. I'm going to keep his uh, skill level high, same angle. He's in formation, so we'll be in formation with the fire team leader. And there he is. Uh, and you can see the aqua colored line going from him to the fire team leader tells you that uh, this unit is under control of the other unit. Now there's no double ring around him which means I forgot to make him playable. So I come in here and I set him as playable. The other thing is I might as well make him a lower rank. Rank doesn't affect skill, it only affects how they interact with each other in terms of groups and taking orders and things. So now he's got a sort of pink double ring around him, different than the red double ring for the fire team leader. Next, keep going. I'm going to make a playable unit, another corporal. And this guy's going to be a grenadier. Has a, a grenade launcher on his rifle. He's all set, good to go. His, the little aqua line shows you that he is in the group of the fire team leader. And lastly, What'll it be? Uh, what would be good? Oh, let's give him somebody with an M136, which is an anti-tank uh, shoulder-launched uh, weapon. And I forgot to make him um, playable, so I have to double-click on the unit again, and I can make him playable. Okay, this is my four-man fire team for players. I'm going to slide up the road here, and at this little camp, I'm going to create a op four team, the bad guys. And we'll we'll go sort of old school Cold War and make the op four team Russians. Class is men, they will not be playable. Don't worry about this stuff. We'll make the leader a sergeant, the squad leader, and doesn't matter what weapon we give him, let's for the heck of it, give him an automatic rifle, fully automatic that means. And we'll leave him in formation. We've got his skill level high. Let's make it a little easy for the players. Let's slide his skill to 50%. And let's make him facing kind of east-southeast. Everything else stays the same. There's our unit. The gray things are buildings. Uh, it says house, but that doesn't mean it's really a house. It's just some sort of building. Um, the tan are roads. And the sort of hash marked stuff is pavement and the gray line here is a fence. I don't know if you can see it on the resolution I'm making this. So he's there. He's a sergeant. He needs help. Let's give him a private who also has 50% skill level. Let's just make him a regular old rifleman, non-playable Russian Op 4. And we get the aqua line that shows that he is subordinate to uh, our automatic rifleman who's a sergeant. Let's put another one in. Mm, let's give think, give them a grenadier, yeah. Give them a grenadier too. And because I'm putting them in formation, um, they will assume the default formation, which is uh, a wedge formation with the leader at the point of the wedge facing sort of in an upside down V direction. And lastly, who should we give them? Mm, let's give them an RPG. 8-7 rocket propelled grenade, an older style rocket propelled grenade. 